here. Um, <coughs> busy, uh, busy week here uh, ahead of us, and uh, uh, obviously jumping back into uh, Big Ten play after our IUPUI game. Have a really challenging week with uh, <coughs> obviously uh, Minnesota up here first. They're a team that's um, you know one at Michigan. Uh, we're sh we're shorthanded and beat a good Rutgers team. Um, um, they've had some great wins throughout the season, one at Mississippi State, um, and uh, just really impressed. They've had some really key transfers um, that have really helped them. Um, the battle kid has been phenomenal. Willis, who was with them at one time, was just phenomenal in their last home game. Um, but they've had some. They've had the addition of some. You know, they're an old team. I feel like I've said that a lot this year about a lot of teams. But they're an old team, uh, well coached. They scheme uh, for really scheme for you defensively. Um, Curry has really helped them. Curry's been with their program for six years now. He's one of those guys that was really good early in his career and battled some injuries, um, and uh, has. Uh, you know, he's out with an ankle injury, but yeah, it's a really good team. They almost won at Michigan State, had a chance to win it basically in the last minute. As I mentioned, they've had some really good road wins um, as well as uh, a good win coming off of us Saturday. So uh, big time challenge, obviously, you know, um, myself and unfortunately our teams, we've, we've struggled uh, at the barn. So uh, we've played uh, teams that have been ready to play. We've had highly ranked teams. Um, I think we were number two in the country at one time when when uh, we struggled there. Um, so, um Bottom line is uh, we got to expect a great environment, a really good team, um, and uh, need to be ready to play. Chris, do you know how much how much of your uh, roster is going to be making the trip? How are you? How have yeah. you guys come out of the week? Yeah, so um, I'm, pretty, I'm glad you asked that. So, um, uh, Michi Johnson um, and Jamari Wheeler are both day to day. Uh, Jamari's had an ankle, um, a foot uh, injury that has bothered him. He has uh, been un unable to practice. So uh, those guys are both day to day and will be uh, game time decisions. Um, and um, Justice is out and Seth is out. You, you mentioned. Uh having issues playing there in the past and, and how some of those games have gone it's a chance for a milestone for you milestone for ej i don't know how much that stuff ever pops on your radar but in addition to having a chance to just play another game and kind of get back in the swing of things there's also come some emotional heft maybe to this game do you feel any of that and, and what does that mean to you that both you and ej could have milestones in the same game yeah no i just uh, you know i i love the contribution that ej you know has has made to our program he's just you know I, I've, I've said it over and over he's a phenomenal kid from a, a phenomenal family he just made a incredible mark his legacy is going to be one that's significant um because of who he is as a player and who he is as a kid but um you know he's got to continue to grow as a player and uh, as, as, as really good and talented as he is, uh, tomorrow night's going to be a challenge for him. And uh, he's got to be um, ready to lead his team. Um, and uh, that's, I think, his, his only focus right now uh, is, is that, uh, is leading his team as well as he can lead his team along with Kyle and Justice and Jamari. So, um, you know, when those... Um, milestones come for for a guy like ej you know we're, we're, we're going to appreciate him for who he is but right now i think he's focused on the task at hand chris i know you got to be frustrated with the pauses and half the guys you just mentioned right there seem to be on the injury report we with jamar you throw into the mix what does that do for you i mean i know you trust a guy like jimmy soto so yeah. he's going to get some run what else do you do you do where do you look for contributions yeah i, I tell you um it, it has been, uh, and I know it's been it's been frustrated, you know, frustrating for for Seth and Justice because I know they expected, particularly in Justice's case, you know, so much for for this kind of season after the season complete season he had last year. But you know, I think you really try to focus on who you do have and the strengths of those guys, the abilities of those guys, and not let the other stuff kind of. Um, mess with your head a little bit and uh, that's what we've tried to do um, 
we've not been able to have a consistent group practicing here uh, in the last week. Uh, but we're, I think we're getting to that point. Um, I, I don't think this is going to be a long-term thing with, with Jamari. We're going to do our best not to – he's a tough kid uh, – not to, not to let this thing be a long-term thing. But um, – uh, it does. It, it, it makes you focus on, okay, what do we have? What can we count on us having? And then how do we develop a game plan um, and a rotation around that? Would you say that this year is even weirder than last? Well, I, I don't know. Last year was pretty was pretty strange given given just the daily testing and the playing without fans. I think this year's a little more normal. I, I would say, Timmy, that I just think – this year, in some ways, has been um, maybe equally as is is uh, uh, or maybe a little more challenging due to uh, you add you add the COVID element to the injuries that you're you know kind of normally going to have some type of injuries on your team. Every team does, but now you add the COVID element to it and the inconsistency in terms of being able to have practice numbers I think that makes it a, has made it a challenge and you know the two pauses that we've had after a couple wins you know too that that kind of makes it frustrating you're just starting to build a little bit of momentum but uh, you know fortunately the day here the, the layoff here is different in that we've had we you know the layoff before we had a lot of guys who just couldn't practice for 10 to 12 days and while we've had some guys not be able to practice, it's not been near as significant. Coach, you mentioned a battle for Minnesota. I'm just wondering, because he's a guy, obviously, that transferred in from George Washington, and, and maybe you'd expect, you know, a little bit of a drop-off in production, you know, coming to the Big Ten. I mean, you've talked about that with guys, you know. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's still, he's putting up, you know, 20 points against Big Ten teams and whatnot. Yeah. Um, what's what's made his transition maybe easier than some other guys in terms of his game? Well, a couple of things. I think one is the level he came at, the the Atlantic Ten, the A-10s are really, it's a really good league. So I think you're always looking at that and saying, okay, that's a pretty good league, you, whether you call it a maybe it's not a power five league but in basketball it's just right it's right there a lot of really good teams so I think that factors in number one to making his transition a little bit easier I think guys that have position he has good positional size and versatility but he can really really score the ball um, you know I, I think uh, he was able to be really productive at a really high level of, of play and then I think that's I think that's allowed him to transition here uh, well and, and again um, you know they've really they've they've needed him too he's had to play a major role uh, on their good season and it's not like you guys don't do this obviously for non-conference games and everything like that but can, is there an added challenge for in, in preparing and scouting for a team that has you know so many contributors or, or guys that are first year players for them because they've transferred from, um, yes. in from other places yes it's an added challenge it really is um, and you, you see that more and more in college basketball but you know the teams that you can say hey we know what this kid can do because we've seen him grow through his three years but you kind of know what he's capable of you know here you're going into situations where you have really good players who you're seeing for the first time it does change uh, scouting for sure yeah, obviously things happen people make different decisions throughout their career but that class when you, that was your second recruiting class here and it was a pretty highly rated class that guys have gone on to do whatever they've gone on to do but with EJ he's been the constant thing here yeah one from the day you started recruiting him to now has that plan going exactly the way you thought it would go well it's it's gone you know it's I I don't think you ever anticipate a, a kid as a sophomore being necessarily we knew he was really gifted and talented and would have a, a major impact in our program we knew the kind of person he was in recruiting him which is so important maturity levels the kind of uh, person so we we felt pretty optimistic about him um, uh, just because we knew the character and the person that this kid was along with his talent you combine that with his talent so um, but I don't know if you ever scripted he's had a pretty he's had a pretty daggone good run um, here and um, it's hard to ever project kind of the success he's had you don't want to put that on a kid but he's it's been it's pretty been pretty optimal and I know for him I know he would like to finish uh, both um, performing well individually but most important to him is is our team uh, 
continuing to have success and have greater success. So from his freshman year where he's playing a role where he's not the yep. guy scoring and that was difficult for him at the time, he's, he's even admitted that to yep. what he is now. Um, and I know it's not over, but how would you maybe kind of summarize what DJ's career here has been? It's been it's been phenomenal. It's been it's been uh, I think he's had a phenomenal, you know, again, I, there's so much of our season left to be played and he's going to be faced with a lot of challenges. Um, but it's just I think he's had a phenomenal uh, career here that I think he hopes uh, continues to grow. I mean, I have I've just loved every day coaching him and we've we've coached him. We pushed him because he's he's we want him to experience everything um, uh, that he wants in his life and that his family wants for in his life. And for that to happen, he's got to continue to grow as a player. Kind of on top of what Stephen was saying, I mean, how much of his, and I know you don't want to talk about legacy with EJ because his, his run's not done yet, but yeah. I mean, he, he said before the season that he kind of wanted to be one of the guys at Ohio State. So, yeah. like, known. Have you seen that? Like, was that a pressure on him? Was that something, was that a load that he took? Oh, I think it is. I think he still carries it. I think he still feels it. You know, we we talked about that before the season. You know, he knows the expectations that come with being the best player. Um, it's That's not easy for a 20 year old kid you know 19 20 21 year old kid like that's 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 a lot it's a lot so you know he and his mom and I and our his family we've talked about the best way to manage that um and he'll need to continue to have uh, practices in place to manage that the right way um you know you got you got a lot you got a lot on your shoulders there he needs just he just needs to be EJ uh he's not a perfect player he's got the things he's got to continue to grow in but yeah that's that's a lot but to your you know to your question EJ's the kind of kid that um, leaving a legacy has meant something to him and you know I think it means something to Kyle Young it means something to other guys too I'm not saying he's the only one but it really means something to him and um, he's one of those guys that you can reflect back on and say okay um, you know Ohio State gave a lot to him but he he gave a lot to this place and how much of that legacy that we talk about is stuff that maybe fans or we don't see whether it's the relationship between him and you him and the coaching staff him and his players like how, how important is that to kind of how he will be remembered yeah no who he is as a person um and how our our fan base is is I think he's beloved as I've said he's beloved so I think that's he's a very endearing likable person um he just really is not just a smile but just who he is and i think that's you can see that in in you know through social media you can see that in how guys play he's very he's very very he's he's very easy to like um so but again his his story is still being written and i don't want to make too much of you know we're not sitting here you know going into senior day here so um he's still got a lot of a lot of stuff left Chris, you guys had 22 days off, I think, in December uh, between games. Not quite as long of a layoff here, but now that you look back on it, how important was that IEPUI game to get in, you know, now that you have, yeah, I think it's nine days between games now? Yeah, I mean, a lot more important than I thought at the time, you know, to be honest with you. Um, I thought it was important just to continue to play and get games in, but certainly more important than I thought at the time, even just to, just to get some game repetitions from some of our primary guys, but also guys, some of our guys that are on the bench. So, yeah, it was, it was important for us. Ted, now have, I think, like I said, nine days between games, and, and do you, do you kind of go into this not really knowing how you guys are going to respond because it's not a 22-day layoff, but it's also not a three- or four-day window like you would normally have. Is there a little bit of a, of a yeah. balance there? I, I don't have as many concerns, but you still do have concerns about just generally how sharp you're going to be. Um, but I don't have as many concerns as I did uh, given that longer layoff and then also guys that had not played or practiced you know we had some guys going into that that nebraska game and nebraska is you know a team that more than capable we've seen that against us in illinois to beat a lot of teams in this league so give them res uh, i think they deserve respect for sure given um 
Uh, I think they're going to have a, a really good finish here. But just in general, we had guys that had only practiced like a, a couple times leading up to that. Coach, uh, Dwayne the other night, he hit seven threes, yeah. broke a Indiana Pacers franchise record. To kind of see the journey that he had to take to get to where he is and the role he has with the Pacers now, just how has it felt to kind of see him break out like that? Oh, man, it's a, it's a great – Dwayne's a great lesson for young players, you know, because older players, you kind of get it a little bit, but he's a great lesson for young players. I mean, you're talking about a kid who – you know, was a good, you know, we were glad when we recruited him. We thought he had a very bright future. We thought he had a very bright future as a player. I think we maybe saw some things in him maybe other people didn't see, but we also knew he was going to require a tremendous amount of daily coaching. And I give guys like, um, you know, Ryan Peden and Jake Diebler and Terry at the time and now Tony, but Jake really's worked with him a lot individually last year. I give Jake a lot of credit for uh, his continued growth, but he's a great example of a young man who it didn't come uh right away for him. It didn't come as soon as he wanted and he stayed patient and he stuck with just the idea of, hey, I'm going, you know, call it the process if you want, the idea of getting better every day and accepting coaching and not looking for an escape route. Um, and uh, he did that. And, you know, we're his biggest fans. I mean, you should see our, you should see our text chains as coaches, um, our group text that night. You know, we're all texting back. I was sending clips that, that I saw from, uh, from, from, from his threes that night. So we're really happy for him. We're proud of him. And we want to see him continue to grow. I told their uh, guy who hit me up on Twitter yesterday, one of their director of scouting, I told him, you know, tell him to keep grinding. Just keep grinding. He's got a lot ahead of him. It seems like guys that have professionalized since you've been here with uh, with Dwayne and with um, uh, Jay Sean, they've kind of had to take that different journey that some guys maybe not have to take, whether you have to go through the G League or you have to go through Europe to get to this to the NBA level. Is that kind of something you preach? You kind of preach this patience of kind of trusting yourself in this organization? No, I think you'll they... see – I think throughout our time here you'll see – various examples. I mean, you saw Kata get drafted. You'll see other guys get drafted. You know, what we really want them, it's, it, you know, it's, it's not about getting there. It's about staying there and finding a team that, that values you and getting a second contract. It's, those are the things that we really want. We want, we want our guys prepared for that. Um, I could rattle off a hundred examples of guys that got drafted and aren't in the league two years later, you know, so uh, we want guys to, to be able to have productive careers there. It's just in, in general, and like you said, not to get too much on like an EJ legacy type of thing, but I, I'm very struck by how important he has been to your success here and the number of wins that you guys have together. And obviously you're about, you're right on the cusp of a hundred wins when you're recruiting players, like when you're going through a coaching career, how often do you get guys like that where you really feel like your success and their success are really kind of bound together? Is that, is that a common thing? Have you had, I mean, you've, you've talked, you just mentioned some really good guys that have played here, but is that a common thing in your profession to, to come across guys like that, that really mean that much to your success yeah I mean I think any coach will tell you Adam that um, their success is directly tied to um, to to um, their ability to recruit uh, good players and players who also in, embrace you know what that coach and coaching staff preaches um, I think that's so important right it's not just good players but it's players that embrace uh, and communicate to the, that to the other other players what's important to the coaching staff to our, our, our program's culture and EJ's that he embodies our program's culture he really does so I think that that's what was really critical we, we were able to recruit a a really talented player who embraced our, our culture and um, and could grow as as um, as our program grew, you know, because he, he was one of our first and earliest recruits. And, uh, you know, I think, um, um, you know, obviously makes us makes us very grateful. But we just listen, you know, our focus is on is on playing as well as we can tomorrow night. So I don't want to spend too much time on legacy.
I was wondering real quick, you mentioned recruiting there at the beginning. If you could look to the future, it's likely going to be a transitional year. You know, with, you haven't even minced words about how EJ's just put a bow on him. He's going to be yep. gone. It's, it's really exciting what you guys – have seemed to have done recruiting here and yeah. a lot of people are talking about it it's a really it's a really exciting class and uh, I, I think we're going to have some really also talented players that are going to grow into new roles next year that are, that are with us right now um, so you combine that with you know adding you know a couple tr you know transfer to with with the young talent that we think can continue to grow and fl flourish and the young talent coming in um, and I'm just really excited about that class the kind of people they are the diversity of skill sets that they bring and their their upside as as a group it's you know it's a phenomenal group it really is and again our our staff deserves a lot of credit because a lot of work went into that but you know there's some thoughts of okay oh no we're losing you know these number of productive guys and and that will be uh, sad in its own right but it's also very exciting about what's I think what's on the cusp here for uh, for us here uh, both with our young guys growing into new roles as well as the the incoming talent it really is okay all right thanks guys thanks, thank you.